I still got my Atari from 1975. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you just give me Paul. That's all I need. Paul and Cubert. Cubert. No, I need Cubert. <laughs> Sounds about oh, right. Sounds like the right business to be. All right. So um, we don't have a heck of a lot of time left, but I do want to start us off into into chapter ten here. Um, so nuclear power. This is written by Janet Ramage, and what we're looking at is how much. Nuclear energy contributes to electrical electric power on the, on a global basis. So it, it started growing obviously in the 60s, took off a lot in the 70s, going gangbusters in the 80s, uh, tapering in the 90s, and, and more or less peaking within the last decade. The graph on the right shows it as a percentage of the total. So it peaked out right around 17, 18 percent, and is on the decline. And I think that answers the question we saw earlier about what, what about the, the data from the, the Chinese paper? Just, we aren't building anymore. Mm -hmm. but that's why that's why that's the reason for the decline. The 90s are stop. Yeah. The next graph shows startups. So the greens are startups, and the reds are shutdowns. Um, I think a lot of what we're seeing right here is sort of the post Chernobyl. Chernobyl days and as with any technology as with any system it's got a finite life nothing lasts forever it's going to start sometime and stop at another time um, you can also see these are discrete events so that's one one three five four etc so just like each one of those little dots on the, the Chinese paper you can count them there's just not that many of them so they're pretty easy to pretty easy to count Okay, so that's kind of big picture on global consumption. The next little bit here gets you know fairly fairly technical. Uh, box uh, box ten point one is worth spending some time on. Let me do that, and then we'll get into the figure that's in front of you right now. Uh, you know, we've we spent a lot of time up to now talking about kilowatt hours, megajoules. I think we might even spend a little bit of time on the um, uh, Planck's constant. But the, the numbers that we're dealing with in atomic energy are either really big or really small. So for, this is box 10.1. Um, so one um, unit this is basically the mass of a proton, um, is equal to um, 1.660 times 10 to the negative 27th kilograms. So that basically means you're going to need 10 to the 27th protons just to make up one kilogram of, of mass. You know, look at a Look at a 100-kilogram uh, person, and you need 10 to the 30th protons to make up, um, to make up one person. Okay, so that's, that's mass. Now, 1 EV, this is, so EV just means electron volt, and it's, it's a little confusing because you're like, wait, isn't a, isn't a volt a measure of electric potential? Well, it is. But an electron volt is actually a unit of energy. And it's more or less the, the amount of energy that it takes to pull one electron away from its nucleus. Last week, we, we kind of showed, I showed you those little nuclear models of, of the methane atom, showed you where the electrons were. If you had a little nano tweezers, you're like, hey, I want to pull an electron out of there. How much energy does that take? Well, it takes uh, one electron volt which is uh, 
like my pad's getting. Yeah, and a, and a jewel, if you remember, is already pretty pretty tiny. You know, you need you need ten million of them just to stay alive each day. Two times ten to the negative nineteenth joules. And then obviously a, a, a mega electron volt is just 10 to the 19th times 10 to the 6th, which is 10 to the minus 13th. All right. Now, um, let's also just do a little bit of Einstein, and maybe we'll, we'll call it a day. But if we got uh, E equals mc squared, that's given right there as the, as the mass energy equation. Um, we know that uh, C equals 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. So if, if you remember previously when we were doing kinetic energy, we knew that uh, E kinetic equals 1 half m v squared. So it looks the same, except C is sort of a special velocity. It's the, it's the, it's the speed of light. And the other neat thing about this is that E is, in fact, expressed in joules. Uh, the mass is expressed in kilograms. And C is expressed in uh, meters per second. And I, I, it's, it's, um, I don't know, every time I look at this thing, I, I, I really kind of scratch my head a little bit because if you look at other things like, um, uh, you know, F equals MA, uh, in this equation, also, um, you know, force is measured in newtons, mass is also measured in kilograms, and acceleration is measured in meters per second squared. It's just, it's just baffling to me that you don't need some other factor, some, some other coefficient out there, you know, to, to, to convert between joules, kilograms, and seconds. It's just, that's kind of how simple and, and I guess, beautiful it is. <laughs> um, so what, what this also means, um, another, another, here's a number to keep in mind, and this will have, and we'll, we'll talk about this more later in the semester, and you might see this in some climate change talks, but let's go out to, um, Go out to this energy released in the Hiroshima bomb. Here, here's the number to keep in mind. Um, 63 terajoules of, of energy was, was released in that explosion. So you could, you could come back. That's to the 18th, right? Uh, yeah. To the 12th. The 12th. Yeah. Well, X yeah. Is yeah. X is 18th. Yeah, yeah. So um, 63 times 10 to the 12th joules of energy was released. You know, that was turned into heat, into wind, into noise. I mean, you name it. Um, but you could then go back and say, you know, some fraction of that mass was missing. You know, whatever was, you know, in the, the radioactive, I, I believe this was a uh, plutonium bomb. Um, oh, no, this was gun type derived. No, this is, this is uranium-235. It was a uranium bomb. Um, you know, some fraction of that mass just wasn't there anymore. It, you know, it was turned into energy. You know, as I said, you know, radiation, uh, wind, what, what have you. So there's... One example of the relationship between mass and energy. And it took a lot of smart people locked away in some dark rooms for a long time to figure that one out, but that's one, one, one power of knowing such things. 
Okay, well, we'll, we'll call a day on there on uh, Thursday. We'll pick it up with 10.3 radioactivity and then go some of the, through some of the technologies of, uh, of nuclear reactors. So you emailed those, uh, those two incredibly intelligent people in the learning centers stuff? I emailed Betsy uh, in the learning center giving her a heads up that she might have some students coming her way. In the, e in the email, I've got, um, excuse me, um, the contact names and hours for both Trinan and uh, Dr. Sloan. Okay. And Betsy will, she's, she's really good about emails. She'll say, yeah, you know, Trinan's in today or sick or whatever. Here's Debbie's email, I'll let her know. So yeah, and they're great, very patient. Good. Yep. That's definitely what I need. Yep.